At the end of last year, I thought, I'm gonna sit down and make a list. People like lists on the internet. 23 reasons why baby sloths are cuter than kittens. Nine ways to impress the girl you've been Facebook stalking at work. I'm gonna do a top 10 matches of 2016. So I made a long list of all the matches in contention, which was too long, and then tried to rank them, but I couldn't really remember what happened in each one, nor how the creative building played into the story. And I fretted and agonized over decimal points and ratings and what exactly makes a good match. Who am I as a person to even judge things like that? And who really is Byron Saxton? In short, I wasted a weekend watching Will Ospreay clips on YouTube. To stop that happening again, I've been keeping a spreadsheet of all my favorite matches of the year. Bear in mind, these are only ones I've seen, so I'm sorry the nine star classic you saw at your local wrestling promotion doesn't feature. I'll always rank emotional investment over everything else, which I believe comes from how into the story and the characters I am. Not just the technical in-ring skill itself. This is subjective. That that said, here are the definitive top 10 matches of January 2017. Number 10, Authors of Pain vs DIY at NXT TakeOver San Antonio, 7 out of 10. Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa's selling can get me into any match, even against the relatively inexperienced Authors of Pain. This was a fantastic big guys vs little guys story and involved a title change. Number 9, Dean Ambrose vs The Miz, WWE Smackdown Live on the 3rd of January, 7 out of 10. This too was for a title, the Intercontinental, but I mainly loved Loved it for the drama. Maurice getting sent to the back by the brilliant referee Rudy Charles was a perfect twist for a show that prides itself on not rewarding heels. Smackdown is the babyface brand. Number 8, Shibata vs Match Riddle, Revolution Pro Wrestling High Stakes, 2017, 7 out of 10. This was the first time I'd seen Riddle live. He's one of the independent scene's most acclaimed new wrestlers, and he genuinely has a star presence. Facing New Japan Shibata for the British Heavyweight Championship helped considerably, and so did the nine or so pints I'd had throughout the course of the evening. Number 7, Naito vs Tanahashi, New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 11, 8 out of 10. Here come the Wrestle Kingdom matches. The main event was so spectacular that on any other day, the three preceding bouts would have taken match of the night. This was my first real experience of the tremendously cool Naito. Number 6, Takahashi vs Kushida, New Japan, Wrestle Kingdom 11, 8 out of 10. I watched Wrestle Kingdom 11 on a Saturday morning eating cereal. That cereal nearly went all over my living room floor when Kushida caught Takahashi mid-air for an armbar. Number 5, Shibata vs Goto, New Japan, Wrestle Kingdom 11, 8 out of 10. I always prefer the harder hitting style of wrestling and Shibata and Goto told a great story, helped tremendously by Steve Carino and Kevin Kelly's commentary of their conflicting approaches to winning and losing. Number 4, John Cena vs AJ Styles, WWE Royal Rumble, 9 out of 10. After two times of trying, John Cena finally beat AJ Styles to win his 16th World Championship, time Ric Flair's fictional record. Cena is one of the best big match performers out there. Not necessarily the best wrestler, but he has few equals for performing. Styles continues to be the best worker in WWE. Number 3, Tyler Bates vs Pete Dunne, WWE UK Tournament 2017, 9 out of 10. This is an example of how I think emotion and story build can often be just as important as the match itself. I was so invested in the whole weekend of the UK Championship Tournament and the final really reminded me why I love wrestling. That one spot after Dunn had been working over Bates' arm for the whole match, for Bates to then use that arm to power up out of a hold, getting the entire crowd on their feet was incredible. That exact same spot done by Super Cena, however, would be annoying. But when built right and you truly feel sympathy for the baby face, it's spine-tingling magic. Number 2, Zack Sabre Jr. vs Marty Skull, Revolution Pro Wrestling High Stakes 2017, 9 out of 10. I'm biased here. I've followed Zack Sabre Jr. and Marty Skull since they're leaders of the new school tag team days, and they both remain amongst my favorite wrestlers in the world. They went over 40 minutes in their Rev Pro match, through which I drank heavily. It was a war and honestly amongst the best matches I've ever seen live. Number 1, Kazuchika Okada vs Kenny Omega, New Japan, Wrestle Kingdom 11, 
10. Speaking of 40 minute matches, here's Kazuchika Okada beating Kenny Omega in the main event of Wrestle Kingdom 11. Not just the best match of the month, probably not even just the best match of the year, but one some say is the best match of all time. Dave Meltzer gave it the hallowed 6 star rating, but because this is my first time rating matches, I don't want to immediately award an 11 out of 10. This is a 10 out of 10. The dragon suplex off the top rope, the moonsault to the outside, the table bump, they were all awe-inspiring spots, but those final 15 minutes of back and forth action were something else. What were your top 10 wrestling matches in January 2017? Immediately pick apart everything I've said in the comments below. If you want to watch my review of the Royal Rumble or me doing stupid impressions of WWE superstars, click the videos to the left and subscribe. I've been Ollie Davis and that was a bloody good month for wrestling.